hears a story and she says, my God, that's the same story that I heard. So at that time, she goes to the police and she said, listen. So she tells him the whole story. Weeks later, they find the body. So now she becomes a, a primo uh, subject. So they contact me and they say, Bill, no, can you uh, uh, can you get the time for you know, with, with hypnosis work in a case like this? And, and what I tell everyone is, it can't hurt. It's like chicken soup. You know, you try you try everything when you work with cases like that. So what we did was we uh, I, I hate to say we, it was me, but it was I, I hypnotized. We bring it back into. Uh, uh, a point in time and have her relive all the uh, the experience. And it, this is also known as a cognitive interview where you recall everything and you say everything that you remember. Uh, and, and I'll go through some PowerPoints because what's a presentation without PowerPoint? Uh, and I asked her because, you know, I, I, I'm forward thinking about these things. I, I asked her, I said, did you keep a journal? And she goes, my God, I did. I said, for chance, did you write this in the journal? She goes, I did. I said, can you remember where the journal was? So we have to go back under, and she remember where the journal was. It's in a storage, uh, storage container in Detroit, Michigan. Two detectives fly to Detroit, Michigan. They get to the uh, storage uh, container. They get in there. They find them. They find the diary that she kept. They go through it. It's all intact except one page that was ripped out. And she ripped out that page. But nonetheless, they had a suspect at the time who they felt very, very strongly about. It was, who do you think it could have been? The best friend. And what do you think they were fighting over? There you go. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, they asked me. Uh, they asked me what they should, what, how they should. Uh, oh, can't hear. Just in case, the AC came on. Any better? Yes. You want like Barry White? <laughs> so, wait. Barry White was a singer. I have to explain what Barry White was. <laughs> He's an R&B singer. Well, he's not singing anywhere right now. He died a couple of years ago. His music's still playing, though. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Uh, so anyway, the uh, the suspect in the case, uh, the Coral Springs Police Department, did bring him in, and him and his brother, and after. After a few hours of interrogation, because you know you're guilty when after 30 years you get a phone call from the police department and you come running in. You're more interested to know what they know than, than you know, it, it's really scripted. And he wound up, uh, he never confessed, but he admitted. He changed his story, he says, okay. And these are these are detectives' favorite words. We've heard them a million times in, in, in the interrogation. Okay, 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 let me tell you what happened. It was an accident, and that's fine. That's all you want. It, we know it wasn't an accident, but you minimize people that people that are guilty, and you're doing an interrogation or an interview with it uh, with that person. You minimize the crime because many times it's socially unacceptable, and it's just a defense mechanism that uh, uh, that kicks in. So you do. You try to minimize it. And I have a little clip from that. Uh, if I can get the, uh, the laptop back on, I'm going to show you a little clip of the, uh, the hypnosis session that we did. 